Today we're talking about fashion influencers and whether they are the new fashion expert of the fashion industry. This is a draft, an, an article that I wrote in, in October 2022 and I sent it to my law professor. She said that it needed, it needed some improvement but I just never bothered to improve. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do a little video and review. This is in context of the fashion week of September 2022. But it can be applied to any fashion week. Also, fashion week, the summer fashion week is coming up really soon. So it could still be applied to this. Okay. <clears throat> there seemed to be an influx of influencers attending last fashion weeks in September 2022. The same debate keeps appearing. Do influencers deserve their place in the fashion industry? I am in favor of making the fashion industry more accessible and inclusive, which has been possible thanks to social media. However, what is the point of inviting 50 look-like influencers who are all wearing the same fast fashion outfit? Holy shit, that was such a bitch. Oh my god. Maybe I was just jealous that I was not invited. <laughs> are the brands inviting people who love fashion or people who love shopping slash clothing? Some can be both, one or the other, or neither. There is nothing wrong with enjoying buying clothes. You would just think the most creative fashion influencers would get invited to the fashion shows. <laughs> you can see that this is my first fashion-related article. Oh my god. I just want to explore the difference between someone who loves fashion and its art and the average consumer. The average consumer is a legal concept used in fashion law to justify and set the standards of protection for brands and their products. Products, sorry. The Court of Justice has deemed the average consumer to be reasonably well informed and reasonably observant and circumspect. You can see that English is not my first language, sorry. By using a global assessment approach, the average consumers must verify three aspects visual assessment of the mark, oral appreciation, and the conceptual appreciation of the mark. So I was talking about the Ralph Lauren case and I'm gonna put the image there and you're gonna so one of the logos is Ralph Lauren and one is not Ralph Lauren but you're gonna tell me if they are similar or if they're not similar this is what the court said for example although there are conceptual differences between Polo Lauren and OHIM so for example the horse versus the bike these differences are smaller than the visual similarities it's just tiny differences like the horse versus the bike but in general, it's just two people, it's just one person on, not a device, but on a horse slash bike and then playing polo. So it was similar and yeah, Ralph Lauren was successful. <laughs> That's how it works in case, yeah, no one can, there cannot be two winners, just one winner and one loser. Or two losers. When I say two losers, it's in settlement. So yeah, let's go. In the context, the Chanel and Huawei marks were clearly visually different. Are they different or are they similar? At this point, I don't even know why Chanel went to court with this. That is clearly different. It was argued that the marks two interlaced curves within a black circle was simply a common geometric element. And let me show you something. Huawei is a technology company and Chanel is a fashion brand. This is why we have clear cut uh, categorizations in trademark because what if for example if you are a known car brand and it's like Rolls Royce let's just use Rolls Royce so you're a known car brand okay so you have the RR if candy brand called Ratatouille restaurant I don't know but that they do candy do you see the clear distinction why would you why would you copyright them if it was another car called Ratatouille's roulettes now there's a, like now there's an issue but because you're arguing with a technological unless chanel is starting to make telephones then great be my guess but i don't understand why you would sue a technological a technology brand when you're a fashion brand these are two different two different circles but then again i think in the fashion industry they're very trying too much to like tie themselves with technology but even though but even like still you're not this it just doesn't make sense it literally does not make sense at least with the Ralph Lauren there was there was something going on here 
An average consumer would be able to differentiate Kevin Klein from Anne Klein, although because they have the same Klein name, but an average consumer would be, uh, or Fendi from Fenty. When we say average consumer, it's not, do you know the history, do you know which item is from which collection, it's not that, it's just the basics. You would, I suppose, I hope that you know what is Burberry from what is Chanel. You know that these are two different, two different brands. So this is what I mean. Okay. An average consumer would be able to differentiate fashion trends. That also is important. But I think with uh, the micro trends that are happening, it can be a bit more difficult because micro trends are happening every couple of days, every couple of weeks. And it always picks something off the, like each other, like the different brand. Uh, I've heard, okay, so recently I heard this trend called um, Bluquette. Bluket. What the fuck is this? Bluket, which which was literally a mix of cookette and bloke. Bluket. So at this point, everything is becoming one big trend. So a fa an average consumer would be able to differentiate different fashion trends. Yes, but a fashion expert is beyond that. And this is a question of who is a fashion expert because. The reason why I'm telling you this is because fa the fashion influencers that are attending those fashion shows are somewhat, they're the ones in the front row, there's the people that are, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that some of the fashion influencers are not, they don't know what they're doing, but I think they're just doing, they're just being there for the event. It's not like they know about the history, it's not like they know about the textile, that went, the craftsmanship that went into the, the pieces. So this is... I'm not saying, but at the same time, I'm not saying that you should always just invite experts. There's these events are also welcome for people who, who are new to the industry. I think it's you see you see the balance where I'm, you you see where I'm going with this. It should not be all people who don't know about the thing, but it should not just be experts. So a fashion expert beyond that. At the golden age of social media, people love to criticize celebrities' outfit and name and name themselves fashion experts. You can like certain pieces from a fashion collection and put them on your Pinterest board. Does that make you automatically a fashion expert? Wow, I was very bitter when I wrote this. Damn. Can someone declare themselves as an expert? Is there a particular community that decides who does and who does not? Like, would Anna Wintour see this channel and say, oh, she's a fashion expert? I don't think so. Like, who gets to decide? Who gets to decide? And even, who decided that Anna Wintour should be the editor of... A Vogue, you know what I mean? So at this point, it's just oh, I don't know. Is there a particular committee that decides who and who's not? Should we adopt the 10,000 hours of practice to become a fashion expert? I should better start counting my hours and see if I am a fashion expert. I don't even know where I stand on this matter. Me neither, sweetie. Even with the what the November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Even like with wait what? Me? I feel like it's been already nine months since I wrote this. Holy fuck. Okay. I mean, nine months later, you still don't know if you if what you sell on that matter. Do I even like clothes shopping? I do enjoy watching educational fashion videos, but this does not make me an expert. Even why I'm writing this article, this is all very subjective. I feel like I'm writing a journal at this point. What the fuck is this? This is really bad. I understand why she told me that she didn't on this. What the heck? Fashion brands probably do not care as to whom they invite as long as it gains exposure. Maybe th that is their intention. Maybe maybe I'm overthinking and this article is pointless. It is pointless, sweetie. That's why you never published it. However, having an online presence on social media is being associated with having influence on the fashion industry. I would say having influence but also having credibility um, but then again, no, actually I'm right. Influencers do play a role in people's purchasing habits, but it does not necessarily mean that they are interested in fashion. The amounts of scandals I've seen, first one that came into my mind was the, what's it called, mascara gate. At this point, the girl was not even interested about the mascara itself. She was just interested in her paycheck, so, but I don't blame her. I don't blame her. But it's not good to lie to people, especially when they're trusting you to buy a certain product. You should not lie. But at this point, I understand why you would want to make that cash of money. Influencers make a lot of money. I know someone's making 2k a month based on a, for a, a partnership with a fashion brand. 
2k a month that's literally a rent this is literally a month's rent are you kidding me oh my god but yeah you do have to be careful with the fact that in, in yeah with what i just said attendees should have a certain level of respect for the fashion for the designers and staff that work hard on these pieces to make the fashion ha shows happen there are people who are generally passionate and interested in the art of fashion fashion brands and their pr team should put more effort and research when it comes to inviting fashion influencers and i think that's oh my god my camera is dying but i'm pretty sure that what i said was true um from reading this uh, draft of an article fashion influencers are not experts no one is really an expert to be honest and this is but this is the thing this is the great thing that no one is an expert everyone is sharing their opinions that's the, that's the good thing with the fashion industry is that i don't say no one is an expert but the fact that we're all we all have different knowledge of what is fashion to us fashion in itself is very subjective and the fact that everyone is putting in their discussions when it's respectful to the others when they are sharing their discussions their opinions with others depending on their experiences but or their knowledge on fashion it makes the it makes the discussion more interesting whereas if it's just with people who are just experts i don't think we would be having the same discussions on whether bella has deeds red carpet look was good or not right you know what i mean um but that's that's a cool thing there are some things that i will not perceive like that i would not see um from a collection from a garment that someone who's who has a new set of eyes can spot quickly or something that an expert might see more in depth that someone who's new might not see so this is just all very interesting and then when it comes to so yes and, so here's the thing the conclusion is that i don't care i literally do not care but then again pr team should be should make a better job at to as to who they should invite because i would rather buy something from someone who knows about the brand than someone who just like oh yeah this is cool do you sure someone could wear this for instagram no i want someone to sell me on that idea of you know what like it took it took ten thousand hours to make these pair of shorts and it did this like i really want to know like tell me on the story of the brand not just it's cute with my wardrobe no i don't want that i literally don't want that and a good influencer that that's bought this job is lina cicheson she's a french influencer and on her instagram stories when it's fashion week she will literally give you the backstory the theme that is going on in the fashion show and what were her favorite pieces and why and that's i like that i really enjoy watching this content this type of content whereas if you just put a video of like people walking like yeah i was at a fashion show I, I was at a fashion show like it's what like what okay at this point you're just showing this to top of that where you were okay but then again people enjoy fashion for different reasons okay some people they want just to attend the fancy events some people it's really about the craftsmanship some people it's to inspire them and challenge their creativity so then again we don't care we do not care we don't care so the very 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 last conclusion is that i don't care we don't care it does not matter it really doesn't okay i hope you like the video bye